good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much, uh, Chairperson of the uh, European Parliament Intergroup on Western Sahara. Uh, and I think that um, the issue of the uh, decision that was uh, announced by the European General Court uh, on the on September the 29th is now almost clear for everybody. And I would uh, start by seconding the appeal that has been just made by uh, by the uh, president of the intergroup on the need really for the European Union now to adopt a new approach uh, with regard to the to the to the future in terms of the agreements with Morocco and uh, start thinking really or uh, um, using the common sense in terms of the need to, 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 to respect the decision, but at the same time to think about its impact on the, on the conflict in Western Sahara, but also on the bilateral relations between the European Union and the rest of the, of the North African and the Maghreb, uh, and the Maghreb countries. Uh, uh, the uh, president of the inter intergroup explained very well the, the decision. And I think that if I am to emphasize something in addition to the annulment that was the main purpose of the, of the decision and the, the main response of the demand that was formulated by the Poli Polisario Front when we introduced our appeal in April and June 2019. So uh, we are really uh, totally satisfied with the fact that the General Court gave us right and proceeded to the annulment uh, total annulment of the two uh, agreements that they have been challenged by the Polisario Front in front of the General Court. But that says at the same time, we want to uh, uh, um, underline that in addition to the annulment of the, of the agreements, the General Court also consolidated the achievements that we had already in for the rulings in 2016 and 2018, especially in terms of the consent uh, the need, the precondition of the consent of the people of Western Sahara in order to uh, get to do any business or, or, uh, or any activity that involves the natural resources of the people of Western Sahara. And I think on the consent, the consent is the central basis uh, on which the uh, General Court uh, uh, adopted its dec decision on the 29th of, of September. But in addition to the consent, the consolidation of the precondition of the consent of the people of Western Sahara, the court also consolidated the fact as that, that Western Sahara is distinct and separated territory from, from Morocco and s uh, consolidated also the rights of self-determination of the people of Western Sahara as uh, the only uh, 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 and unique way to settle the decolonization conflict in Western Sahara and also reaffirmed the position or the condition of the Polisario Front as the representative, the sole representative of the people of Western Sahara. But uh, the, 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 um, the new elements for us that would really uh, uh, make us think exactly the way in which the president of the intergroup was referring as this decision to be uh, a turning point are basically three new facts. The first one is the issue uh, in relation with the, uh, with the, with the uh, idea of the benefit of the people of Western Sahara. Uh, on those agreements because the central argument of the European Council, the Council of the European uh, Union was this, that what the people of Western Sahara were benefiting from those uh, agreements. So the court said very clearly that there is no argument at all about that and that what matters is the consent of the people of Western Sahara. And then the second element is in relation with the procedure that the European Commission, especially the European Commission, was trying to sell out this idea of the of the uh, of the uh, of renewing the agreements, including the Western Sahara territory, that the Commission uh, undertaken a sort of consultations with the people on ground in the territory, and that they expressed some views uh, that it's really positive and that they are benefiting from those agreements. So the court on the 29th stated very clearly that there is no point about that at all, and that the consultations could never 
substitute the precondition of getting the, 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 the consent of the people of Western Sahara. And the third element, which is even more important, is in relation with the status of the Polisario, Polisario Front, because in 2016, the court, uh, the general court said that the Polisario is the re Polisario representative of the people of Western Sahara and stopped there. But this time around, because of the nature of the appeals that they have been introduced and that the fact that the new agreement included explicitly Western Sahara, thus the Polisario Front as a, as a sole representative has, has had the right to challenge them, the court this time around uh, further uh, uh, clarified the status of the Polisario Front and confirmed that the, uh, a part of being the representative of the people of Western Sahara has also the personal legality to challenge those agreements and to defend the rights of the people of Western Sahara and the territory in front of the European justice system. And we think that this has really a very uh, important impact both on the political level but also on the legal and the economic uh, level. So I just want to, 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 to emphasize on two things, that from our point of view, uh, we call open the European state members, but also the Council of the European Union to abstain from uh, appealing the, the decision uh, of, the, of the general court, because that would really uh, project a very bad image about the European Union as a whole, uh, a union that is trying to um, project an image of being uh, respectful to the law, to the international law, and to the decisions of the justice for the third or the fourth time is challenging its own decisions just to serve some narrow interests with a third country, which is Morocco in this case. That's the first uh, appeal that we would like to make. And the second one is to clarify and uh, uh, that uh, one of the arguments of the European, uh, the Council of the European Union and the Commission and France also and Spain, the countries that they have been involved in the process, that those the, the renewal of the agreement has only an economic connotation, has no a political impact on the process that was going on in Western Sahara. And this is really something false because we, we, we know for sure that one of the elements that encouraged Morocco to violate the terms of the ceasefire and uh, challenge almost the whole e UN attempts to decolonize the territory was because of those uh, wrong signs that they have been repeatedly given by the European Union and other uh, international capitals that uh, 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 through which Morocco got this sentiment of be of impunity on being above the, the law. And that's why Morocco dared to violate the terms of the ceasefire, occupy a new part of the land of Western Sahara, extend the existing military military wall. And now that is why we, ha we have the, 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 the war going on in Western Sahara. So the European Union decision by extending uh, uh, the, the um, the agreements to Western Sahara uh, had uh, a central impact on the political, uh, a bad and negative impact on the political process going, going on uh, by then. And now it is not only the war in Western Sahara, now there is a mounting tension in the region. Uh, you would have re known, of course, about the severing of diplomatic relations between Algeria uh, and Morocco. Everybody knows that uh, the Moroccan behavior in terms of policies of destabilization of the whole region is at the origin of this decision, but also the lack of cooperation from Morocco in terms of decolonizing the territory and allowing the referendum to take place was also at the center of the reasons that led Algeria to, uh, to, to adopt uh, this decision. Now, there is a tension in the region, a region exactly at the doors of the European Union, and we think that the, the, um, the format that has been uh, used and in place for decades now by the European Union, thinking only uh, about the interests of Morocco at the cost and the expense of the other people and the countries of the region uh, uh, is not working anymore and uh, the European Union really had to, has to adopt a new approach uh, to avoid further escalation in the situation and to diffuse the situation in the in the in on ground in Western Sahara and in the in, in and in the region as a whole I think the European Union has 
to adopt a clearer position on Western Sahara, has to uh, uh, abide by the uh, decisions of the uh, European Court of Justice, but also has to abide by the international law and uh, express a full support to the only ratified agreement between the parties to date, which is that one uh, that would have led to the organization of a referendum of self-determination. And, uh, and that's the, I think, the formula that would serve. Uh, it's on the interest, not only for the people of Western Sahara and the people of Morocco, the people of the region and Europe as a whole. So I thank you very much for your attention and uh, we will be very ready to respond to any question.